Well, hello again. This is AJ Shaver from Shaver Specialty Services and Sales. Uh, we've kind of hit the magic 50 hour mark on the processor, conveyor, and disc cleaner. So I just kind of want to do a little 50 hour review of uh, just how things are holding up, what's going on, and uh, some different tips and tricks that we've used uh, that have benefited us. and want to pass that along to you. Stay tuned. All right, so we'll start here with the Brute Force 25 foot radius axle stacking conveyor. Uh, this does have the Honda 630 uh, engine on it. I believe it is a 20 horsepower equivalent. And uh, why we're using such a big motor on that is because we're also powering the disc cleaner with that. You can see the hoses that run from underneath the conveyor here and over. We do have the tires spun in the radius uh, position and we're filling our NNZ log lift third of a cord firewood bags. Uh, third of a cord is also face cord, I guess is the other term for it. Uh, these racks are something that we constructed and uh, they work out really well. We just kind of push the conveyor from one bag to the next until we're done. And it also gives me some bonus area over here on the side that I can back in a pickup truck or a dump trailer or anything to also load out with. So there's the remote lines kind of coming in behind the hydraulic oil filter. Nice big reservoir tank for the hydraulic oil. It is electric start. Single drag chain, top drive hydraulic motor. Uh, we did put the larger infeed hopper on this. Uh, just because it's coming off the cleaner and that way I can make sure everything makes it in there no matter what angle uh, we've rotated the conveyor on. I do have the hitch pulled out of this and then something else that we did um, found a front hub out of either my one ton ram or the f550 or something and it makes a really nice pivot point for uh, the conveyor to spin on or pushing it around. Over here, I'll show you the conveyor controls. We do have forward, reverse, neutral, and speed control. So here's our forward and reverse. This is our height. Uh, I'm not gonna go up any higher than where we are because we're plenty high enough for filling the bags, but we have that as an option. Uh, speed control is right in there. It's kind of also a proportioning valve for the um, the disc cleaner. There's our oil level, the built-in thermometer on the inside. All right, so this is the Brute Force disc cleaner. Uh, it does have about 12 different uh, sections of discs that go across this little view on the inside here and uh, just remember all of this stuff has right about 50 hours on it brute force does powder coat all of the stuff so i think of anything that would be taking a real real hard beating would be this cleaner you can see the nicks and dives where things have bounced into it but i'm not really seeing anything as far as the paint coming off of stuff So over on this side where everything kind of spills out from, usually have one of the kids over here using uh, the manual hand crank wrapper because uh, it's really nice. It separates out the kindling and the garbage from the firewood. So they just kind of hang out over here with their headphones on and jam to some music and uh, paying them anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar bundle depending what we're doing. So that's their little way of making some income. So we throw the tarp underneath it just to kind of help do an easy cleanup. We are running on top of asphalt millings back in here. So uh, it really does come in handy for just staying out of mud and all that kind of stuff. So try to keep things a little bit nice and neat. Uh, I was walking around here so I could show you the speed control on this. 
basically we've been running things around like a, a number five or a six anything faster stuff comes flying off of there anything slower i don't it just kind of bounces across instead of just getting tumbled and clean really well uh there are different height adjustments here on the legs as far as going up and down to make sure you're spilling into where you need to um probably dump it right in the back of a pickup truck if you didn't have a conveyor set up like this so let me uh transition here and i'll open up and show you the the cogs and wheels on this thing all right so i fired things up because just looking at it not turning's not very uh interesting so this is how everything works behind the scenes on this disc cleaner Uh, I did go over to Napa and we bought a case of the uh, Max chain and cable loop. And pretty much every time I fire this thing up, uh, we're spraying it off. The chain loop, it is number 1370, I think, on, uh, on Napa's inventory list. I just think that's cool to look at. So again, that's our brute force disc cleaner. So now on to the 1624 wood processor. This does have the extended deck on it. And again, we're right around, I think there's 52, 53 hours on this. Uh, the conveyor came with a few more hours on it just from testing the disc cleaner. Um, start here with the motor. Uh, this is the 38 horsepower uh, EFI Kohler V-Twin motor. The EFI makes it really nice for those cold winter starts, no choke or anything. Uh, have your oil cooler, big reservoir tank, fill gauge, Holds right about two and a half gallons. This is where the oiler comes in uh, and feeds the saw. We've had a nice 18 inch round diameter log go through there. And we do currently have in our eight way wedge. The six ways over there. Kind of a little pre-cleaner. Some of the stuff will fall down through the, the grates there in the sorting table. Uh, we throw a little blue tarp here underneath the processor just to kind of do the end of the day cleanup. Just grab that after splitting a couple of cord. All the debris, loose bark, small pieces kind of come out. Uh, if we ever did take this out on the road again uh, to do some mobile processing, uh, we have a set of grizzly bars here. They just go up and they have uh, mounts that are welded right onto the processor themselves. Kind of gets clipped into there. We haven't used them yet, but do plan on doing a little bit of uh, some cleaning later or mobile processing later on. Go around here to the control side. I like my little leaf blower. Also at the end of the day, just kind of walk this over and get all the rogue sawdust off of it, trying to keep things neat and tidy. Never know when somebody's gonna come over and wanna see something run. It's kind of embarrassing to show it off if it's piled up to sawdust past the axle. Uh, speaking of the axle, it is a torsion axle with highway tires on it. I will tell you this does pull pretty well. Uh, we brought it back from about five hours away up in uh, above Utica, New York when we bought it uh, up at the, uh, the Boonville Logger Expo, which sad to say isn't going on this year. So hopefully this video kind of gives you a little uh, a virtual show of what we have going on. So all the different controls here. Everything is all hydraulic on this. The setup of the log deck up and down, uh, the conveyor up and down. You do get forward, neutral, and reverse on the uh, the conveyor itself. Pull this out of the way. Also, that very same speed control that you saw over on the uh, conveyor and the disc cleaner. Lots of universal parts coming from brute force. Makes things easy. And again, 
we are showing 54.7 hours on the meter. Again, with everything being powder coated, this is really the only areas that are missing paint. It's down here in the splitter trough, and then where things kind of slide across here, but the table, the infeed, the live deck, even, you know, the sorting table here. I mean, even the wedges still have paint on them. The conveyor going up, lots of black paint. But as abrasive as the firewood is, really, really happy with how things look. I know we've done every bit of 50 cord or better, just from what's in the bags here behind us and around us and what we've sold so far, going out bulk in the dump trailers. Uh, you do have a round infeed trough on this. Makes it nice for the, the crooked stuff. Kind of centers it on the drag chain coming in. Nice big meaty teeth on it. There's a the drive mower. Again, big, big hydraulic reservoir tank on this. The oil has a chance to come in and rest. Uh, there's also a little temperature gauge kind of built right into it there. Just for eyeballing it, you know, with the cooler running. So there's the hydraulic ram for easy setup. The live deck does come up and it will nest inside of the bracket there for transport going down the road so you're not over with. These are the support uh, keepers for the conveyor. So also while you're going down the road, you can pick that up. And uh, I think it's right around 13 feet because it's 12 foot. Uh, elevator doesn't quite go straight up and down, but you are about a foot off the ground, so. Uh, this is the extended deck model. I'll go around the other side, but basically everything from this weld here Kind of going forward is the extension because we do run 20 foot logs uh, We actually had a 30 footer bouncing off of this Run a two inch ball electric brakes heavy duty safety chains electric brake breakaway box kind of use this pin for hanging the the war out saw chains on once I get about four or five on there run them up the road we have a guy that sharpens them for me for about two dollars and 25 cents a piece uh, we have been running all uh, non ethanol gas in this we are lucky enough to have a gas station right around the corner from us uh, that sells a non ethanol stuff keep a box full of extra saw chains we were on some really muddy stuff uh, earlier in the year. We were going through quite a bit of chains, but finally we're back onto some good stuff. And uh, this is our, oh, the extended deck. That's what I was gonna show you. So here's that same weld that comes up and over from the other side. So everything that to the left is the extended deck, which is nice because it allows the longer wood that we tend to have up here in the Northeast. So like I said, we were able to balance a 30 footer off of this give you one last kind of look of the brute force setup that we do uh, we are using the brown tarp here in the center to collect the the sawdust on throwing that in the log lift bags we have a local horse farmer that wants to keep it for stalls and stuff so it works out really nice for us i hate wasting good things like that and we do have plenty of sawdust coming off of this so this is the new AM machinery, uh, 716, 1600 uh, deck over dump trailer. Uh, the 7 by 16 uh, or 716 stands for 7 feet wide, 16 feet long. 1600 is a 16,000 GVRW uh, sporting the AM 190 log loader. That means it gets 19 feet worth of reach from the center of the trailer out and picks up right around 3,000 pounds at the half reach mark. Uh, I love using this as kind of like a landing loader. We'll put it between the log pile and the live deck and I can swing things from here right up over past the trailer and onto the live deck. Uh, we did put a big toolbox on this just for putting things on the inside, saw chains, gas cans, you know, whatever handful of tools. 
I do use the the deck space for sorting out the big stuff that comes out of the pile that I know won't go across the uh, the live or through the processor. Also use it for sorting things out. Got two big pieces of cherry here. So once I get enough cherry out of the pile, uh, we'll move that conveyor over to the uh, next empty bag and run just a, a nice solid run of cherry for doing some smoker wood. Do have the Load Range J tires on this, super, super heavy duty. Uh, they are 17.5 solid steel rims. Nice upgrade on the package. Oh, and this is not aluminum that you're seeing. This is actually galvanized. So being in the Northeast, I really hate rust and I hate the way that other trailers look once they're two or three years old, just covered in rust from the, the road salt and things that we have up here. So the extra money spent was uh, well worth it, I believe. Uh, the dump trailer does have a nice big telescopic ram that's in the front here, kind of big dump truck style. So if it goes on here, pretty much it will go up in the air. Uh, if you do have your own trailer or cabin chassis style truck that you want to mount a log loader on, we do that as well. Just need to know your dimensions outside to outside frame, driver side to passenger side, and top of frame to the ground just so we can get the angle and the right length on the outriggers. Uh, this one did come as a bumper pull with a 2 and 5 16 ball. We also do gooseneck setups on this, but uh, it seems bumper pull is probably the most common one that we do. So that's what we brought in. Well, as always, thanks for watching. I'm AJ Shaver with Shaver Sales. If there's anything we can ever get you a quote on, please email us at sales at shaverequipment.com. If you'd like to talk to us in person, it's 833-SPLITTER. That's 833-775-4887. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.